Hello and welcome to this video on solving problems using the GROW model. This video is for anybody who wants to improve their problem solving skills. My name is Bob Griffiths and I'm a coach and facilitator based in the UK. I've been using GROW for many years with individual clients and groups to help them find their own solutions to problems, issues and challenges. While you can use GROW by yourself, it's a lot easier if somebody else works with you. I normally use GROW with my clients to help with problems, so in this video I will be using the term client for the problem owner and coach for the person who is helping them. GROW is probably the best known coaching model in the world today. It was developed in the 1990s by watching how expert problem solvers worked and analysing what they did to help people create their own solutions to their own problems. I will use this map to illustrate how GROW works. We will shortly go into detail of how you can use it to solve problems but first we need to clarify what we mean by a problem when we're using GROW. Many people believe the definition of a problem is self-evident, but for the purpose of GROW we define a problem in a particular way. In order to be a problem in GROW terms there has to be two elements present, and you need to clarify both elements to define the problem clearly. The first element is there must be something the client is trying to accomplish, a goal or desire. The second element is there must be something that is obstructing them achieving what they want. It's very important to understand that both elements must be present before someone has a problem. Let me illustrate what I mean with a couple of examples. The statement, I have a headache, is not a clear problem. However, if we add, I have a headache, it's stopping me concentrating, and I have to sit an exam I want to pass in the next hour, the problem becomes clearer. This is because in the second statement we know both what the person wants, i.e. to pass the exam, and what's preventing them from doing so, the headache so we have a clear problem. Let's look at another example. I don't like my job. This is a statement and not a clear problem. If we add, I don't like my job, I want a new one but I'm afraid of interviews, it becomes a clear problem. The value in defining a problem in this way is that once you have expressed the problem in this format, it becomes a lot clearer how to get around the obstacles to get to the goal. And once you have a way around the obstacles, the situation is no longer really a problem, it becomes a project which the client can go out and accomplish. In the headache example, if the client's headache can be cured by an aspirin, and they have access to an aspirin, the solution becomes to take the aspirin and the problem is sorted. In the second example, if the client has a fear of interviews, the solution becomes to learn how to conquer the fear. If they have a way of dealing with the fear, the problem is turned into a project that the person can accomplish i.e. to use the book. The problem only exists when the person cannot find a way around the obstacles. Now we've defined what we mean by a problem, we can take this idea further and look at the full GROW process. However, before we go into the process in detail, let's look at a typical scenario when someone comes to another person with a problem. Normally the first instinct of the person who is listening is to offer help and advice. This can work sometimes, but it has a number of negative consequences. Firstly, the problem owner is deprived of the opportunity to find their own solutions, which builds dependence, and secondly, the solution might not be correct for that person at that time. Most of us have experienced giving a friend a perfectly good solution to their problem, only to hear them come back with but, and the reasons it will not work. So I'm not saying never give advice. I am saying be wary of it before you have really understood the elements that make the problem up. In the full process, we take the idea of having something the client is trying to accomplish, the goal or desire, and the obstructions, and expand on it into six stages. They are overall goal, session goal, reality, obstacles, options, and way forward. Here we return to the map. The map is a useful analogy as it visually represents the whole growth process. On the map, your goal is your destination point, where you want to be. The session goal is what you want out of the GROW session. The reality is your start point, where you are now, and the obstacles are what's stopping you going directly from where you are to where you want to be. Your options are how you're going to get around the obstacles to get to your goal, and the way forward is you actually starting on your journey. Having had an overview of the process, let's look at each of the stages in more detail. Firstly, the goal. When you have a problem, the first thing you have to do is define the end point, the goal, the success criteria the person wants which will solve their problem, issue or challenge. 
This needs to be defined in clear, smart terms so both coach and client know when they have achieved it. Once you have a goal, we can look at the session goal. This is what the person wants out of working with you in this session. Often it will be a plan for how to achieve the main goal, but it's always worth checking. Once the goal and session goal are agreed, you have to define the reality. Remember that in GROW, reality is not the same as realistic. The reality is where you are now in relation to the goal, so it should be defined in the same terms. So if your goal is to earn 100,000 a year, the reality is what you earn currently. You should also include in the reality any tools, abilities or experience you have which might help you to achieve your goal. Now we come to the obstacles. This is where most people want to start. As I mentioned above, there has to be obstacles otherwise the person would achieve their goal for themselves. Normally obstacles are found in the person themselves, other people, a lack of resources or the environment. It's important for the coach and client to clearly define the obstacles in such a way that both understand how an obstacle is stopping them move forward towards their goal. Once the obstacles are clear, then it's usually fairly straightforward to work out ways around them. These are the options. Options, as the name suggests, do not have to be followed, but allow the client to have choices about how they get around the obstacles so they can move forward. Then the client chooses which of the options they will put into operation. The coach helps them think about the first steps for the options they have chosen. These will be the way forward steps. So we've gone all the way from an undefined problem right through to the point where the client has some actual action steps they're going to take which will move them towards their goal. Not bad for the one to two hours it usually takes to get to this point for a difficult problem. Many problems that people are stuck with can be dealt with if you approach them in this way. Grow does not work with all problems, but it's very effective on many different types. It is easier to use Grow when there are two people, one the problem owner and the other asking the questions. I would invite you to see how you can learn to help others using Grow. If you'd like any help, please contact me at bob at bobgriffiths.com and I'll be pleased to see if I can help. Happy problem solving.